listening to the Suave Lover Podcast with your hosts, Benjamin Ritter and James Amaro. Suavelover.com, advising gentlemen on the art of romance. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode. What is the longest distance? Not longest relationship. I know your longest relationship was about seven hours last weekend. What was the longest distance? I couldn't find the condoms. <laughs> I took that. <laughs> now, what was the longest distance relationship where where you've seen someone for more than a few weeks and they're apart that you've ever had? The suburbs of <laughs> for real. Of, yeah, I have never been in a in a long distance relationship. Like com- I committed, I've kept in touch. No, oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. when you come in town, let's meet up for a few hours. Hey, I'm gonna come to see you, but never. Oh, I would not get into a long distance relationship. Well, we've got a question, and I think it's really good because we should talk about it because I think we can already say long distance relationships suck. But the question is from a name that I won't repeat. And it is, uh, guys, I've been seeing a girl for eight months now. She's great. She just might be the one. We're in Stamford, Connecticut, which is on the East Coast somewhere. Uh, And she's moving to Austin, Texas for work. Uh, We decided to give long distance a try. How exactly do we make things work? That's a great question. (laughs) Move away from each other. Find someone else in your hometown, (laughs) your new city. (laughs) Fuck a lot. (laughs) Uh, talk on the phone with you, with them, and then when they come back in town, you can be together. Well, there's a couple of facts that struck me. Uh, <laughs> I moved from Minneapolis to Madison, and I did a long distance thing for a little while. This is in college, and it worked for kind of a couple of months. And as far as that, it worked, but it became clear after a little while because this girl could move that she should move, and she did move. So she moved to me. So a couple of facts that we don't have here are. How long are you planning to be apart? I mean, if she's moving for work, is this a permanent arrangement? Eight months. Uh, Eight months is enough time probably to get to know somebody, really to get to like somebody. But are you talking just might be the one? That seems very serious. Uh, And the sort of conventional wisdom is serious only happens in the same area code. So in Chicago, there's like four area codes downtown, right? You won't go from 773 to 312. The situation is going to be really difficult. Long distance relationships suck. You hit it right on the nose. It can't be a permanent situation. Yeah. How long are you going to be away from each other? And how healthy is a relationship currently? What are both of your intentions? Have you had an honest conversation about it? Have you really, truly discussed it flat out? And have you talked about, well, what if you do slip up? Because it can't just be all roses, you know? It can't be all... (laughs) Can't be all oh, we'll be perfect. It'll be like we're living it'll be like we're together going on dates every week. Well, it's not going to be. Yeah. What if you do slip up? There's uh some insights that we can borrow from the polyamory community that apply to vanilla folks too. The poly community have this idea of the hundred mile rule, which is if you're within a hundred miles of each other, which means a long drive. If you're within a hundred miles of each other, you don't get to see other people. But at mile a hundred and one <laughs> You have to be safe. It can't get serious without letting the other partner know all those other kinds of things. All That's of sudden, one way of doing it. All of a sudden, people have the iPhone, like, GPS trackers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, where are you? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm home. No, you're not. You're 103 miles away from me. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> where right, are you? <laughs> right, right. And it's because we tend to think, and, and eight months in, I can see this, we tend to think that this person is the sort of source of our satisfaction. They're really excited. It's great to be around them, and that somehow will, I don't know, Skype with them or FaceTime with them, and it'll all be the same, and it won't be. The physical companionship, the camaraderie, the doing things together is a huge part. What sort of expectations or what was the result of your long-distance relationship? Well, okay, so I'll wind you back. This was 20 years ago. <laughs> we, we, were, we were cyber texting in the green screen terminals in the computer lab at our respective universities. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was green screen uh, sex chat. That was how we kind of stayed in touch. And guess what? That was really unsatisfying. (laughs) You know, simulated sex, conversational titillation is not the same thing. It's not 
there was no we didn't have images yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were no photos to send back and forth unless you dropped them in the mail so we do have that now we yeah. do have snapchat yeah. we have skype we have that's right pretty affordable airfare yeah and in fact if, if you're thinking about this as here's a situation that we find ourselves in and the circumstances aren't permanent let's say that the job is deploying you for a six month restructuring of the shoe store that you work i don't know fine six months you have a way that you can handle that because you can almost think of it as like a project that the two of you can manage you're going to be around until you can have some planned times together maybe they're going to be holidays or birthdays or fourth of july and that allows you then to sort of set some, have some expectations about this thing coming to closure but when you are indefinitely separated Think about what you're doing when you're serious, might be the one. You do life planning together. You do weekends together because the work week has presumably ended. You start future planning with that person who you're spending your time with. And by the way, you didn't have to arrange dates to spend your time with this person once it's serious. You're just together. Maybe they live with you. Maybe they hang out and crash all the time. You've gotten to the point where serious means you're commingling your life plans. How to Start a Kinky Relationship by James Amaro is the definitive guide to successful alternative romantic relationships. The book has been called Fifty Shades of Grey for Real People. Educational, informative, and irreverent, this book has something to offer anyone who is curious and sexually adventurous. Get your copy of How to Start a Kinky Relationship by James Amaro at Amazon.com or in select bookstores today. And this is before you're married or you have a family. Yeah. Which there are a lot of people that have to work in other states. And, yeah. And um, that's horrible. And there may be an understanding that you can veer away from the relationship sexually. There may not be. More likely than not just because of our basic instinctual needs and urges. Unless you're really at work 12 hours a day, well, then you'll just fuck the secretary. But they, it's maybe just a little bit more under the table. Like, we don't know about it. Sure. Which I hear a lot from my consultant friends, by the way. That it's very easy to find some hookup oh. in the port of call? They fuck within the company. Oh, sure and enough. It's, I mean, this sure is, enough. it's literally, like, just a secret within the company. that You're a consultant, you're married, you're in a relationship, whatever, you're on the road, you're fucking somebody else. Sure. And I can't say that's always the case. I'm not going to say that whatsoever because a lot of people can, some people can be in an exclusive monogamous relationship or don't care enough about sex. Yeah. Maybe their sex drive has been diminished a little bit. I know at least one case of that happening in human history. I know. Yeah. So that's possible, <laughs> right? You're not married. You know, you're just seeing this person. And so you, you don't have that commitment or that I guess a vow sure. right to, to be sexually exclusive to have to be sexually exclusive to maybe not care so much about the sex in your relationship because you have other responsibilities mm. but you really do have to have a point in time where you're going to be together again in the same location yeah and that's if they're the one you have that life planning like you said and if you don't have that life planning when you're going to be in a long distance relationship the long distance relationship is going to fail because you're not giving it the right amount of attention and basically honest communication that it requires for it to be successful sure i mean distance can be physical where you are physically distant in separate cities it can be that you just become distant because you're so preoccupied with work you don't see enough of each other either way you are going to stray because you intuitively want the companionship the closeness the other things that go in to sort of an intimate relationship i guess the question that i'm going to have for this writer this listener is what kinds of things do the two of you connect on and bond on now that you can build on and reinforce that you can make sort of sort of mundane <laughs> things that you do that you can celebrate that yeah. you can work on together. You have to share experiences with each other still. Yeah, right. That's, the, that's exactly that's what, it'll what it is. That's and exactly so what it'll be. You have to be in a relationship long distance as if you're in a relationship together. If that's scheduling times to go see the same movie. Sure. So then you can talk about it afterwards. Mm -hmm. If it's sharing like a, a pictures or news story about a, a passion that you both have. Mm -hmm. If it's scheduling Skype calls sure. to show the new outfits that you got you mm -hmm. have to include them in your life as if you're sharing regular ex daily experiences with them one guy that i had coached had a girlfriend who he had met stateside 
she was visiting from Poland. They spent a month together in this sort of torrid swept up affair and spent two years seeing each other about three times a year. <laughs> and they knew it was coming, but they Skype all the time. They stayed in touch. Look, I get that the technology can eliminate some of the physical distance, but what technology will not do is substitute for just smelling hair, just having a shoulder to lean against, uh, having somebody to cuddle up with on those sort of moments where you need a little bit of pure companionship. Know that. If you know that going in, this guy seemed very satisfied. And in fact, what he was doing, uh, as many young guys will do, he was kind of young, is he was still honing his uh, flirting skills while he had this girl that he was extremely loyal to. And so fine, he got to hone his flirting skills. Not that he needed them. In his mind, this was the done deal. This was the one. Turned out not to be the one. <laughs> not surprisingly. But this was the done deal. But nevertheless, he was going to get the other stuff handled. So if you are doing that. If you're taking the approach, I'm going to be very serious about this girl, exclusive to this girl. I'm not going to ruin the relationship, may I suggest. Don't. So a couple of things. Be wickedly above board. Have no secrets. Have nothing to hide. That is, if you do have things to hide, make sure that she doesn't find out about it. Don't rub her face in the fact that you're going out Saturday with just the boys and that there's plenty of hot club girls at the place where you and just the boys are going out to. I mean, there's going to be a natural sort of, I want to call it, what would be the word? The sort of jealous suspicion? Yeah, well, how, how are you checking in in a long-distance relationship? Do you have a scheduled time that you have to call every day? I was speaking to a couple people before about their long-distance relationship, and one of the things was, he didn't call me at our scheduled time. He's cheating on me. Sure. And so do you have a scheduled time to avoid suspicion and to make sure that you guys can catch up on each other's day yeah or does that maybe when you're not feeling so hot that day isn't the best idea because then you're actually hurting the relationship by adding the stress of that expectation or you know is it bad just because maybe you will stray and you don't want to have that scheduled time where you have to call and you have to start hiding things and so what's the best situation because each one of them has their faults sure more so just honest communication during the day and not having an expectation where you have to call, hey, I'm really busy today, I'm not going to be able to talk on the phone. Hey, I'm going out with my friends tonight, I'm not going to be able to talk on the phone, I'll call you tomorrow. Or, you know, can you go a few days without talking? Is that hurt the connection in a long-distance relationship? You know, how do you keep the intimacy and the closeness when you're so far apart when you aren't talking? The Essentials by Benjamin Ritter is your concise manual for life improvement and success with women. The Essentials has been called a straight-to-the-point lesson in the lost art of being a man. Packed with insights, this book will transform the way you think about dating and relationships. Get your copy of The Essentials by Benjamin Ritter at Amazon.com or in select bookstores today. Yeah, and the more secure each of you are, so that depends on a lot of things, the more you're not going to sort of naturally be suspicious. Furthermore, I think that these the listener has sort of like the one guy, one girl, you get into a relationship, that's what this is all about. And that's great. That is typically true. But the difficulty is when you sort of get into a relationship because it makes you feel so great, but you don't actually have any convergent plans at all as case in point. It's not like the two of you are planning to make babies. And, you know, I suspect that they have the sort of one guy, one girl, boyfriend, girlfriend template working, working with them. And unfortunately, after eight months, you don't know that this is the person that you should be committed to, that you're supposed to be committed to. You're, you're actually in the blossoming stages of getting to know somebody seriously. And so this is going to make that incredibly hard. So what I'd suggest, if I were to make a suggestion without actually sort of consulting one-on-one, I'd say as a general rule, this is the time where you keep your options open. You can stay close with each other. You can get to know each other better given the distance. You should enjoy the time you get to spend with this girl. However, if there's a uh, management consultant and that you're hooking up with, <laughs> and you're in your consulting role uh, down in, uh, excuse me, she's in. No matter what, just like I'm sure this listener has issues at home, sometimes you don't want to talk to the person. Sometimes you're stressed out. Sometimes you don't want to invite them over. Well, guess what? Now they're going to be really far away. When you're stressed out, when you don't feel like talking to them, you're not going to. 
you're going to avoid it. And if you don't, you're going to build a resentment. It's going to be a lot easier to, to kind of move further away from a stale relationship. Sure. And so your main goal right now is to try to keep the relationship in this eight month period mm -hmm. to basically keep it fresh, to keep it fun, to keep it interesting and to not have these negative kind of feelings surround it because each of you have different expectations or you're getting insecure. Yeah. And the only way to do that other than unbelievably being honest and communicating and not cheating or fucking somebody else or being resentful in any way is to take away the expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is what our advice is going to come down to date other girls date other people if you want to and i would say whether or not you want to yeah. <laughs> and, I, and i mean unfortunately you're in the worst stage of the relationship to not be close to each other you're in the best stage where you should be having weekend plans and going out during the week once or twice and her talking about whether or not she leaves more than a toothbrush or she gets a drawer to leave clothes in so all i can reasonably suggest is stay close to this girl hopefully have a plan for exiting this arrangement because one of you got to move either she moves back you move to her or the two of you agree that i don't know portland oregon is where you want to settle and be a fun regular vacation could could do right sure and and of course if you see her once a month because you've got the means to go travel to austin austin's a cool town and let's say you do have the means to travel as much as you can sure this relationship could work because you'll be able to Okay, I take that back. <laughs> really, the realistic kind of pessimistic, is it realistic and pessimistic? Kind of can't really go together, can it? Well, I think it's very realistic. Unfortunately, you got to be pessimistic about this one. Is that even if you are seeing each other and taking the trips? Yeah. Just don't think about what's happening when you're not there. And this is not to doubt your exclusivity or their exclusivity. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that you will be better off mentally as well as socially. If you don't have this lingering idea that you're in an exclusive relationship without any kind of thought of being together in the next week or two. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, this don't ask, don't tell rule. How many people are going to do this? Nobody. But what they should do, what people should do when they find themselves in this arrangement is negotiate what your terms and conditions, what your expectations what your deal breakers are going to be. For her, the deal breaker may be, if you even look at somebody else, you're gonna probably think that I'm gonna feel so bad, right? It could be. Her deal breaker may be, I don't want you to sleep with other girls. I don't want you to fall in love with another girl. And if you sleep with somebody else, use protection. And unless you actually know that, unless you've actually talked about this, you're setting yourself up, I think, to become incredibly frustrated. Here's why. If you stay faithful because you were expecting to stay faithful, and then three months from now, she posts on Facebook <laughs> some kind of a drunk bar night, and it's pretty clear when, uh, you know... She didn't answer her phone at the scheduled time you were supposed to talk. Yes, and then and all of a sudden this guy out. named Jeff is messaging her publicly on her wall all the time, mm -hmm. and it's very, very intimate you're going to go a little nuts because you feel violated because you stuck by the rules that you never established. Most long distance relationships that I've broken up. <laughs> that you've broken up. <laughs> um, tend to be long term. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can see this transition from I'm not getting what I want. I'm not getting what I want. Sure. We're fighting. I'm not getting what I want. I don't see them enough. Wow, I'm really having fun with this guy. Yeah. I'm not getting what I want. <laughs> and then you just see them. You know, they're on the phone in the middle of the night. Then they don't talk about them anymore. Yeah. And then they go on a weekend trip. Yep. And then they come back from him. Sure. And then they're with you. And they just start playing this double side. You know, they start playing both teams. Yeah. And it's sad mm. because they're not being honest. Only because they're not being honest. Yeah. Right. But they want to be happy. And I see it all the time. Yeah. And it's just this like... You start off really strong and really great. And the, you can, both partners are like, I am in a relationship. And you're like, well, then why are you making out with me? <laughs> it's tough. Don't, you know, if you're going to this situation and you are, just be honest, communicate. If let's say you have specific expectations in the beginning of it, which are exclusivity and staying honest and you sure. want to battle it out. Well, if this, either of you mess up, do you tell James? Do you tell? Do you say anything about it? Okay, I think don't ask, don't tell, at least in this case. Um, but I also think advice to, to the gentleman listening, uh, brace yourself for the breakup conversation that is likely. Not possibly, but likely. Especially if you don't let them do what they want. Sure. 
Because then they're just going to feel guilty. I've had a couple of those really, really tough phone calls late night. Um, it's going to hell. And it was either the breakup call or just two calls away from it. And they're hard. Just brace yourself for the fact that they're incredibly hard. There's a huge amount of emotion. There's a huge amount of detachment letting go. It's unlike other breakups where the breakup can be angry, can be face to face. Uh, you know, unless you're texting or Twittering. <laughs> the guy broke up by Twitter recently. Huh. You know, it's, it's a different kind of a breakup. It's a different kind of an emotional rejection. Brace yourself for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and know that it's not going to be pleasant and that you are setting yourself up for this. And it so, probably happened after they're already having sex with the person that they're breaking up with you for. <laughs> you know, what? The, the worst part about the breakup is that the one who has initiated the breakup already knows it's over. You know, that's the bummer. It's the one who doesn't know. The one who gets broke up with is the one who's blindsided and hurt and sort of left holding the bag. And we're being blunt because you need to hear this. Yes, right. Because even if it's miraculously the best relationship you ever had and in three months you're moved in together and yeah. it's beautiful and long, you know, happily ever after yeah. and kids and white picket fence and ponies and unicorns, etc., might not go that way. Right. How do I make this work? Okay. Well, you beat your head against the wall. You go against the odds because every serious relationship happens in the same zip code. And you brace yourself for the failure. And then you kind of hope for the best. That is what the nuts and bolts of this is. There's really not, best as anyone can work out, a very clear pattern for how to survive distance, apart from let the distance be temporary, <laughs> find an end to it, and then, okay, actually think of it as vacation, right? You're gone for three months. That we can deal with. But when you're gone for an unspecified amount of time because you now live in a different city, well, you should have been ships that passed in the night in Vegas, dude. So in other words, get your pilot's license, fly everywhere for free. <laughs> yeah. Have multiple long-distance relationships. Sure, sure. And just live it up. <laughs> Yeah. Or, you know, maybe she'll become a cam girl and then you'll never miss her. <laughs> <laughs> I got Wi Fi and airplanes now, don't they? That's true. That's true. <laughs> you have been listening to the Suave Lover podcast. Visit suavelover.com to become the kind of man that women crave. <laughs>